Okay, so now that we know the sum rule and the power rule, we just need one more small rule to be able to take the derivative of any polynomial function. Okay, so the last rule we need is the constant product rule, which just says that if you have a function f of x equals constant times another function c of x, then the derivative of f is just c times the derivative of g. Right, so an example of this would be, say, f of x equals 2x squared. Okay, this is the same thing as b times g of x, where g of x is equal to x squared. Okay, if I take the derivative of this function, prime of x, that's 2 times the derivative of g, which if we apply the power rule to g, we get 2x. This is 2 times 2x, and that gives us 4x as our final. Okay, and where's the constant rule come from? Uh, it comes from the limit definition. Okay. Right. So if we were to write out the limit definition of our derivative, we'd see that the constant product rule just pops out of the limit pretty naturally. Okay, so if we took f prime of x is equal to the limit of delta x plus 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x, right, divided by delta x, right, the limit of the average rate of change of f, we plug in f as 2 times g of x, right, or, or constant times g of x, right, limit as delta x plus 0, of constant times g of x plus x minus constant times g of x over delta x. This is for f of x equals constant times g of x. Right? And then you see we have a constant in both places on the top, so we can factor it out. Limit as delta x zero of c times g of x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x, okay? And whenever you have a constant times other things inside your limit, you can pull it out of the limit entirely as long as it's not what you're taking the limit of. So I can't pull the delta x out of the limit because that's what we're taking the limit with respect to, but I can pull a constant out, right? If you go back to those properties of limits uh, videos from last week. So I can pull the c out, so this is c times limit is delta x to the zero of g of x plus delta x, minus g of x over delta x, right? And then this is just the derivative of g, right? This is the limit definition of the derivative of g of x, c times g prime, okay? That's where the constant product rule comes from, okay? So um, let's do another example. Okay. They have f of x equals 6x cubed. Well, that's 6 times g of x, where g of x is equal to x cubed. And we know from the power rule that g prime of x is 3x squared. Get 3x to the 1, which gives me 3x squared. OK, so then if we take the derivative of f, f prime of x is going to be 6 times g prime of x, which gives us 6 times 3x squared, or 18x squared. Okay? That's just using the constant product rule. So if we have the sum rule, the constant product rule, and the power rule combined, Power of all three of these rules allows us to take the derivative of any polynomial. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say f of x equals 6x fourth minus 3x squared plus x n. Right? And we can think of this as applying each one of our rules kind of in order. Let's start with the sum rule, right? So f prime of x is equal to the sum of these 
polynomial terms. So that would be by the sum rule, we could take the derivatives of each of these things separately. Right? So that would give us the derivative, I'm going to say ddx of something. Right? This means the derivative of 6x. Okay? The derivative of whatever I put on the inside of this ddx. Right, and I'm doing it like this so I don't have to call this G, H, whatever. I don't have to rename these things. It will be less confusing uh, overall. So the sum rule says I can do the derivatives of each of these things separately. Right, so plus d d x of minus 3x squared plus derivative of x plus derivative of minus 10. Okay, so this is the sum rule. All right, then by the constant product rule, I can pull these factors out. Okay, so let's pull out the 6, dx, fourth, minus 3, derivative of x squared, plus 1, derivative of x, and here I'll pull out a minus 10, and then this will be derivative of x to the 0. All right, so x and 0 is 1. Hence, so this is the constant product. Okay, so I'm pulling out all those constants. Okay, and then finally, we'll apply the power rule. Then this gives us 6 times 4x, 4 minus 1, minus 3, x, 2 times x, 2 minus 1, plus 1, 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, minus 10, 0 times x to the 0. Okay, so this is the product rule. Make sure I... Okay, great, so you can read that. Okay, so then let's just finish up the algebra here. Right, so this becomes 24x cubed minus 6x to the 1 plus 1 times 1 times x to the 0 minus zero, right? So this factor of zero becomes, even though this is x to the minus one, we have a factor of zero in front, so it's just zero. Right, and then x to the zero is again one. It's our final, right? The only, you know, kind of strange thing that we might be thinking about is this term here, right? This term x minus 10, we had right here right so technically you can think of this as two functions right x to the one minus 10 x to the zero or you could think about this as or as a linear function right so the linear function we'd say that the derivative g prime of x is equal to the slope of that line which would give us one if we apply the power rule this function, right, we get g prime of x is equal to x 1 times x to the 1 minus 1 minus 10 0 times x to the 0 minus 1. Right, so this gives us 1 times x to the 0 minus 0 1, but that's just gives us 0, right, so this gives us 1 minus 0 equals 0. Right, so these are the same. You do it by the power rule or by saying that's a linear function with slope one. Right, so either way works. Um, just for consistency with the rest of the powers, I, I did the power rule above. But either way works, so whichever way is less confusing for you. Okay, let's do maybe one more example. Let's say, grab one. Um, Let's do this one here. Okay, f of x is equal to x plus 7 minus 7x squared plus 7x. All right, and I'm not going to write down all the steps individually. We'll just do it, you know, faster because, you know, when you do these, you're not really going to split them up every single time by every single different rule. 
All right, let's take the derivative. So here we leave the constants alone. So constant times by the power rule to x cubed gives me three times x squared. All right. Then we move on to the next term. All right, so minus seven, we leave the constants alone. Do the power rule to x squared gives me two times x. Move on to the next terms. Plus seven, right? We leave the constants alone by the constant product rule. We do the power rule on x. That gives us one times x zero. Right? And then derivative of a constant is zero. Or we could do the power rule on that. But I'm just going to say derivative of a constant, write this as x to the zero. So if I pull down that power, I'll get a zero. Okay. And then we simplify. 6x squared minus 14x plus 7. Okay, x to the zero is equal to 1. Okay. So it's really not as much work as I made it seem in the previous problem. It's just applying each rule carefully and, you know, just being careful with all these derivatives because there's a lot of things going on. And it's easy to kind of make a small error that then casts. But your power should always go down, right? So this leading power is 3. And after taking the derivative, the leading power goes down by 1. So that's a quick check. Your power shouldn't be increasing, and it shouldn't be going down by more than one. Right? Let's do maybe another example with some weird powers in this. Let's say f of x is equal to square root of x minus 1 over x plus x cubed 6, let's say, minus 30 over x, something like this. Okay, the first step when you have stuff like this is to rewrite everything in powers of x and maybe put the leading order first. This would be 6x cubed plus x to the 1 half minus x to the negative 1 minus 30x to the minus. Okay, so I have it just in order of highest powers to lowest power, just to make things easy. Okay, so then the derivative, this is f. And f prime of x by the power rule here, so leave 6 alone, bring the power down, gives me 3x squared. I'll use parentheses. Clean. Bring the power down here, 1 half, x to the minus 1 half. Okay, so that's 1, really, this is 1 minus half. Half minus 1. Right, powers go down by 1. Here we leave the minus 1 alone, so minus 1 times. Power rule here says minus 1 x to the minus 1. Same thing here. I leave minus 30 alone, bring down the power of x, and then lower the power by 1. So what does this give us? Okay, 18x squared. This gives us uh, 1 half x to the minus a half. This gives us plus x to the minus 2. And this gives us plus 90 x to the minus 4. Right, so then if I wanted to rewrite that in a way that I had before, I could, or I could leave it like this. Either way is fine. This is the same thing as 18x squared plus 1 over 2 root x plus 1 over x squared plus 90 over x to the right? And when you have these different powers of negative x, x, negative powers of x, you can't combine those, right? Unless you were to multiply them and like find a common denominator. You can't just like combine them all. Right, so this is not the same thing as 1 over 2 root x plus x squared x. Right? Don't do this. Don't. Okay, that would be wrong. Right, they have to be separate. Unless you were to combine them by finding a common denominator, you can't just like add them on the bottom automatically, right? So I'm just going to cross that out. I don't, I don't want you to do that. Okay? So we'll stop the video here, and, you know, the homework for this is just taking, you know, different uh, derivatives of different polynomials with different powers and, you know, different fraction powers and stuff like that. Okay? So if you ever have a problem with one of these, uh, you know, just reach out and, and we can work through it together.